cab over is up and running. We're running it now. Um, so far, today is the second time I've run this truck since putting the radiator in it. The first time I ran this truck, I didn't really do much. Um, I hooked up the low boy trailer to it and uh, ran it on down to the RDU airport. All right, first load with the new radiator. It's a 336 excavator. Thing weighs probably, or 330, sorry, not a 336, but I don't know, probably weighs like 70,000 if I had to guess uh, on the trailer. So I'm maybe 110,000 gross, which I have never done with this truck, but I'm not bringing it on the main road, I'm bringing it just across the airport. Loaded that up, brought it back over to the other side. I was in out, done with that before, I was home before like 10.30 in the morning and I made 600 bucks. But that's the only work I've done with this truck since putting the radiator in it. As far as the radiator goes, I did end up putting a new core in this radiator. Uh, somebody had mentioned before, would it not be better to just get a whole new radiator? And maybe it would be better. Uh, the only issues with that are one, I wasn't, I was having a hard time finding one. And then two, when I was finding them, they were like $4,000. So 1600 to basically have a brand new radiator uh, felt better to me. Um, truck is running like a top. The load I did today was just a quick little uh, run from Oxford, which is near where I live in North Carolina. There's a, a shingle plant there. Um, brought shingles straight from the factory down to ABC Supply in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. <laughs> I just had that tire put on. See, it's tore up.
right now. I am sitting just outside Wilmington, North Carolina, waiting to pick up tomorrow. You watch, he's gonna be the last one to show up and the first one to get loaded. That yeah, works. <laughs> That's yeah. usually how it works. Yeah, need to pull up out the way, you got to get loaded. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to break down the whole day anyway. Yeah. That's like it has to. Man, I just moved one of your cranes out of Orlando. Oh yeah? Well, just the track of it, big Manitowoc out of uh, Ritchie Brothers auction. It went to South Carolina. Okay. W.O. Grubb bought it. The track was 60,000 pounds all by itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just bring it forward just a little tiny bit. That's good. That's good. You can put it down. Clear. Oh Hold shit. I got bigger pieces of dunnage. You gotta come, you gotta come back up. Even the rainies over here in what is this, Ocala? Yeah. Uh, needed a few more of these edge protectors. So I'm gonna be moving some shingles tomorrow and I don't ever have enough of these darn edge protectors. So I came in here and bought some. And uh, I didn't realize they were so expensive. But 
I mean, they're not really that bad. It's just you buy so many at once, you know. Um, I mean, at like the truck stop, an edge protector is super expensive. Like we're talking like 15, 20 bucks for just one. And here they had a pack of 20 of them for like $83, something like that. Which $83 is a big number for just some little ringy dink pieces of plastic. But compare that to, uh, to the price at the dang truck stop. That's not bad really because you got 20 of them, so it's like four or five dollars a piece. Not the end of the world, but yeah, it just feels like a lot when you're buying that many at once. just got done moving a uh, section of a truck scale so you know when you pull up on a scale and you look down there's like these concrete pads that you're driving up on right well the scale at least the one we were moving was made of three of these pads and each one of those pads weighs about somewhere in the neighborhood of like 35,000 pounds so but um, so there are three trucks all of us uh, running these they're about to have a huge accident right here because we're trying to drive around in the median you seeing this oh, I think they hit each other already Imagine. anyhow there's three of us moving them they were like 26 feet long, 24 feet long, something like that, and 11 feet wide, 35,000 pounds, so not terribly heavy. We took them from Wilmington down to, Wilmington, North Carolina, down to Tampa, so it's about 600 some odd miles down, and that paid $2,750, so I made $660 on Monday and between Tuesday and Wednesday I made another $2750 so that put me at somewhere around $3200 ish for the week I'll do the math uh, when I edit the video I think I'm like just over $3000 like $3200 for the week so far now I'm on my way up to Jacksonville to pick up a load of shingles bring up by, well, it's Asheville, Virginia, which is really like Richmond, Virginia. And that's gonna pay another roughly 1,500 bucks. Now, I would have liked to have gotten uh, more footage of this whole thing, but I was in such a hurry, and when I was at the place getting unloaded, uh, the guy complained when I started making video he didn't want me videoing in their operation as if every truck that runs in and out of there doesn't already have a dash cam kind of kind of dumb but you know that's how they go they want to make all the rules they don't want to pay really all that much money i mean th this load paid okay but it was completely disorganized they they weren't qualified to you know what i mean to be dictating anything and i need to document stuff you know Cause I was a little worried. The original crane that picked up these uh, pieces was pretty large. I don't know how heavy of a crane it was, but it was a, a, of the larger variety of crane. And he struggled to get them up in all the trucks a little bit with that big crane. And when we got unloaded, for some odd reason, they sent out a rotator truck, like a tow truck, to unload us. And I wanted to make video of it uh, because I was 
sort of in the back of my mind anticipating the possibility that we could be sitting there a while if that rotator truck couldn't pick up the uh couldn't pick up that scale off us because then we'd have to wait for a totally different crane it would have been a fiasco and these brokers man they do not i i don't get it man like they do not ever want to pay detention time it, it's it's ridiculous like it ain't my fault that you guys sent the wrong damn crane it ain't my fault that i that your shipper or your receiver kept me waiting right but yet, every single time, every single time that something like that happens, the broker wants to wash his hands of the situation, doesn't want to come out of his pocket, or even at, you know, try to get the money from his customer, nothing. Like, look, when you decided to be a broker, you kind of accepted those responsibilities. You know, if a truck's, you know, gonna charge you something, you're gonna have to pay it. That's part of the deal. And you gotta sort that out between you and your customer. Now, if I was working directly with the customer, I'd sort it out with them, just like I'm sorting it out with the broker. But these brokers, they wanna make all this money, they wanna get in the middle, but they can't stand to lose a cent. Meanwhile, they'll have trucks sitting around for days on end, riding around, you know, extra route and mileage, and they don't wanna pay anything. They'll call trucks in and then, you know, cancel the load. They don't want to pay for that either. They never want to pay their bills. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, I know the shipper also doesn't want to pay, but at the end of the day, you know, us as truck drivers, we're plenty capable of uh, collecting our money from, from shippers, but we can't do that when these brokers stand in the middle and then don't want to help us, which is their whole purpose. And I'm not necessarily convinced that these brokers don't end up getting money for detention and layovers and tow new charges. I think that they get it and then they go and they keep it. As a matter of fact, I know of circumstances where that happens. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. I just, I don't think that brokers need to be abolished like some people, but I do think that they need to take some responsibility for their work and what they do. And yeah, sometimes your customer's gonna leave you in a bad position. That's just what happens. So that doesn't mean you get to pass on that cost to me. Just because you got put in a bad spot, you're just taking and putting me in a bad spot. And you're not losing anything. Ain't right, man. But anyways, I wanted to make that video so that way when inevitably I was, you know, in case I had to argue with this broker about my detention time, I'd have something to show. And these videos that I make also have helped me in the past because then I've had people try to act like I didn't deliver something. I had that happen down in Miami. I delivered a piece there and, uh, Probably about a month later, that brewer called me up trying to tell me that they're saying that I never delivered it. Well, it's been a month. I've been paid and everything. And uh, I was very lucky because I happened to have a video of the unload in that circumstance. So, you know, these people trying to act like it's such a bad thing to be taking pictures or video. I mean, like I said, Anybody can go on Google Maps and pull up a satellite view of your whole place. You got 20, 30, 50, 100 trucks running in and out of there every day. All of them with dash cameras. And me holding up a, a phone just to snap a quick shot of the situation for posterity is such a big problem for these guys. It's ridiculous. Well, this morning, I'm on my way from my house up to Richmond, well, north of Richmond and Ashland. We're loaded right now with, oh, about 47,000 pounds, almost 48,000 pounds of shingles that I picked up in Jacksonville last week. Um, I could have delivered them last week and gotten paid on it, but I've got another short run in Richmond. 
while kind of across Richmond for another $500 that picks up and delivers today. So I decided to go ahead and just stop off at my house for the weekend and deliver this loaded uh, today, which is Monday. So this load came out of Richmond only pays like 1500 bucks, which isn't very good. It's like maybe 250, 230, 250 a mile, which is low. Uh, but everything coming out of Florida is low, unfortunately. So that is kind of the way it works. So I'm gonna try and make up for it, make up for the deadhead a little bit too, by running that short run for 500 bucks and uh, see how it goes. I don't really have this week uh, lined out like I normally would. Um, pretty much all I've got in line for this week is just what I'm doing today. I'm gonna real. I'm gonna look to see if I can get anything going back down uh, towards my house or past it or something like that. That way I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to uh, drive empty help my uh, rate per mile a little bit but one good thing is this fuel at least for me is going down pretty quick see I've got that uh, pilot fuel card and just as an example uh, just this morning I topped off I didn't buy very much like 50 gallons but I, there's not a lot of places to stop for pilot anyways around where I'm going to be going today. So I went ahead and topped off 50 gallons and the pump price, I want to say it was like 450 a gallon, something like that. And my price was like 320 a gallon, which is great. I could have got it cheaper if I had went out of my way a little bit more, but it wasn't a big enough savings. It felt like to be worth it. You know, it was like, 17 a gallon instead of 322 a gallon it just I would have saved some for sure but it would have been like just like a couple dollars and I would have spent that just going out of my way to get it so I just went ahead and topped off down in South Hill Virginia um, but this is as low as I've seen fuel since I've been doing this I know maybe it was lower right before I got into this but I've been in it, that low threes is about as cheap as it's been. Maybe as we approach the election, it'll drop into the $2 a gallon range, which will be fantastic. And I haven't been doing too terrible on rates either, so it's working out pretty nicely, honestly. Um, so hopefully we can keep this up. That'll be good. I'm sure the fuel will come back up for, you know, probably next winter but just have to deal with that one step at a time. Look at that guy. He's all on a brick wall down the road. What the heck? Huh. I can't say I've ever seen that before. That's crazy. So here we are at the pickup in Louisa. This is a, uh, I guess a stone quarry of some type or crusher plant you can see up over the ridge there zoom in on it you see all that gravel there's a I think it's a gravel plant or something like that up there it's kind of small I don't know what they were doing in here there's a lot of pipe and everything like that but uh I don't know what I'm picking up so the uh great confirmation and the whole deal is that the thing I'm picking up is only supposed to weigh 1,800 pounds, allegedly. And it's like 10 feet long, not very tall. I think it might be this red tank on that pallet back there. Now the reason why they have me coming out here to pick it up instead of like a hot shot or something is because they want it to be dock high. Why they need it to be dock high, I don't know. But that's what they want, so we'll see because my, maybe it's a piece of pipe, but my anticipation is it's gonna be that red tank back there, I'm guessing. So they're probably gonna to have to move this log trailer, which I guess they're using to move pipes around. 
So I bet it's gonna be that red tank. And then they needed to be dock high because they want to drive the forklift off the dock onto the trailer, which fine. But when they load it, they're gonna have to load it long ways and they ain't gonna have a way to put their forks under it, you see? See how the pallet is? I mean, I can't carry it sideways if it's 10 feet long, which it looks like it is. I can't really carry it sideways, so this will be interesting. And this is another Landstar load. Um, I keep saying I'm not gonna run their stuff and I just keep coming back and running it. The, uh, I got here and there's nobody here at all. And so I started looking for a phone number and the rate confirmation and buried on the rate con, there's a little annotation saying unmanned warehouse, which we're in a lay down yard, not really a warehouse. It said unmanned warehouse, call an hour before pickup. Well, Landstar called me before I even left Richmond and asked me when I'd be here and I told him. So I was hoping since they called me, they would have called their guy and we'd be good to go. But apparently not, because I called the guy and he said it's gonna take 30 to 45 minutes for his guys to show up here. So I'm like, what the hell? Um, so, you know, Landstar's asking, is, is calling me to find out when I'm gonna be there. And rather than calling their customer and saying that they're leaving me to do that as well, so I've got to answer their calls. I got to ride around with the tracking app on my phone. And then I get here to find this note buried on the rate confirmation. You know, nobody told me it, like actually verbally told me it. They didn't make it like bold on there. They didn't make it really obvious. I mean, they've got a thousand things written on that thing. I mean, they, they really, if, they, if stuff like this is gonna happen, they need to put it front and center, so. I don't, I don't know, man. So here I am, stuck waiting, which kind of sucks. That's one way to get it done. Pretty light, 1,800 pounds, and it is that red tank, so let's see if it actually is as light as they say. Oh yeah, this thing don't weigh nothing. It's like my trailer's empty right now. I got 20,000 pounds of securement on the thing because it's round. I always have trouble hauling things like pipes and tanks and stuff. So I always put a lot of straps on a round object like that. Of course, this one's uh, banded to a pallet, so it's probably okay just with two straps, but, you know, you won't get in trouble for using too many straps, I guess. But yeah, I have more than 10 times the required securement weight-wise. But, uh... Yeah, this is these situations are why I just say I, I don't I don't like Landstar. I don't like the way they do business. I don't like anything really about them, and it blows my mind that so many people lease their truck on with them. Because if you're an owner operator on your own authority, looking at the load boards, and maybe you just you're considering just leasing on a Landstar for one reason or another, which I hear people doing from time to time. You, you know on these load boards, all kinds of brokers say no Landstar, and I never really understood why that is. But I noticed on this rate confirmation that it said that you have to check in as Landstar, which kind of gives me the impression that this might be double broker or co-broker. Uh, so yeah, that was one sketchy thing about it, but hey man, it's Landstar, they'll pay me anyways, but uh, that's one thing I'm not too worried about with Landstar. The other sketchy thing is that they kept acting like they didn't know what it was. Man, Landstar is just, it's 
getting wild with these people, man. They, uh, I have a hunch that they knew. I mean, I don't know for sure, but my hunch is that they knew that this was a tank and they were afraid that they wouldn't be able to get it moved for the price they wanted to move it for if they told people up front that it was a tank. Now, I've moved tanks before. I know I can move them, especially when they're brand new and empty like this one. You don't need any tank or endorsement, nothing like that. I've been through this. I've carried actually two, like, I think they were like 10,000 gallon tanks, if I remember right, uh, all the way from Pennsylvania to Virginia before. I'm not worried about that. I just would have liked to know rather than them trying to act like they didn't know. Because the question in my mind is like, okay, so do you not know? Which would kind of be a little bit incompetent. Like you're supposed to be able to tell me the commodity or are you lying to me because you think I'm gonna try and charge you more for it being a tank? Which I wouldn't have myself. I mean, not for a tank like this. Um, but yeah, and then that business with, uh, you know, checking in as Landstar and burying the fact that I had to call this guy way ahead of time to have somebody out there to unload me, which, you know, it was like buried in that rate confirmation. I mean, there's a lot of issues here that, like just with this one load, and that's just every Landstar load is like this. And I don't know, maybe they give the better stuff or they treat their drivers better, but it's just awful sketchy. I'm not a big fan of this whole deal. I mean, I'm gonna start charging Landstar a premium to move their stuff because every time it's some nonsense like this where I'm stuck way more time than I should be just waiting to get loaded. That's what happened to me last time getting loaded. I got stuck there like three or four hours longer because they told, because all the drivers to pick up that last week needed to be there at the same time. And uh, they told one of the drivers just to be there at 9.30. Well, the crane, but the crane was there at like, whatever, eight. And then the guy didn't show up until 10. And, you know, it just really delayed everything a lot longer because of that. I mean, it took longer for the crane to start getting set up because he couldn't just pull in and set up. Everything took longer because of that. And that's just another example. Then the time before that, they told me I could pick up 24 hours. I get there at like nine o'clock at night and nobody's there. So I ended up losing a whole day over that. So it's like, I have, I have yet to have one of these Landstar deals that goes the way it should. So that's just my personal experience.
ahead. Do not the color. TLA to hit the fence. How am I going to get out of here is the next question. Uh-huh.
I appreciate it.